Leviticus chapter 22, Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Leviticus chapter 22, verse 1, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, And so God says this, verse 2, Speak to Aaron <clears throat> and to his sons, that they separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Israel, and that they profane not my holy name in those things which they hallowed to me. I am the Lord. In other words, the priests must respect the holy things and thereby show respect for God. Verse 3, say to them, Whosoever he be of all your seed among your generations that goes to the holy things which the children of Israel hollow to the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, that soul shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. And so any descendant of Aaron, any future priest, must not attempt to minister in the holy tabernacle while they are in the condition of being ceremonially unclean, or they will experience the wrath of God. God does not tolerate being treated as a commoner, a common thing. Verse 4, what man soever of the seed of Aaron is a leper, so he gives an example here, or has a running issue, he shall not eat of the holy things until he be clean. And whoso touches anything that is unclean by the dead, or a man whose seed goes from him, or whosoever touches any creeping thing, whereby he may, he may be made unclean, or a man of whom he may take uncleanness, whatsoever uncleanness he has, the soul which has touched any such, any such shall be unclean until evening and shall not eat of the holy things unless he wash his flesh with water, or until he washes his flesh with water. So, if that future priest is unclean for any reason at all, he cannot partake of the holy things. An unclean priest can't touch anything holy until he has bathed in water. And one more thing, verse 7, And when the sun is down, he shall be clean, and shall afterward eat of the holy things, because it is his food. So he has to bathe and wait until after sunset, and then he can partake of the holy things like any other priest. 8. That which dies of itself or is torn with beast, he shall not eat to defile himself therewith. I am the Lord. A priest could never eat a dead animal that someone found laying in the woods or whatever the case, or any animal that was torn by another beast that would make him unclean. Verse 9, They shall therefore keep my ordinance, lest they bear sin for it and die therefore, if they profane it. I, the Lord, do sanctify them. So God made the priests holy. He's the one who makes them holy. And therefore, they're going to die if they're reckless concerning their own holiness as it regards the holy things. 10. There shall no stranger eat of the holy thing. A sojourner of the priest or a hired servant shall not eat of the holy thing. So people who do not belong to the family of the priest cannot eat, or could not eat, I should say, the holy food which had been offered to God. 11. But if the priest buy any soul with his money, he shall eat of it. And he that is born in his house, they shall eat of his meat. A slave, either purchased by the priest or born into his household, could eat of the holy food. Verse 12. If the priest's daughter also be married to a stranger, she may not eat 
of an offering of the holy thing. So if a priest's daughter marry a non-priest, she's changed families. She comes under the household now of her husband. And for that reason, she's no longer connected to the priest and his family. So she can no longer eat the holy food. 13. But if the priest's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child and is returned to her father's house as in her youth, she shall eat of her father's meat, but there shall no stranger eat thereof. So if his daughter becomes a widow or is divorced, and if they don't have any children, if they didn't have any children together, she can return to her father's home and she has become as she was before. And she can eat the holy food. Verse 14. And if a man eat of the holy thing unwittingly, then he shall put the fifth part of it thereof to it, and shall give it to the priest with the holy thing. So if someone accidentally ate some of the holy offering, some holy offering that was offered to God, they would be okay as long as they replaced it and added 20%. Verse 15, And they shall not profane the holy things of the children of Israel which they offer to the Lord. So the priests were not allowed to cause any of the holy offerings that people gave to God to be desecrated in any way. And that's what these rules are all about, treating God and the offerings of the people with respect and dignity. 16. Or allow them to bear the iniquity of trespass when they eat their holy things. For I, the Lord, do sanctify them. Priests were to make sure, and the priests were to make sure, that no unauthorized person would eat the holy things. If they did, those unauthorized people would be guilty and they would be punished. It's up to the priest to make sure that they were not put in that position. 17. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and to his sons and to all the children of Israel and say to them, Whatsoever he be of the house of Israel or of the strangers in Israel that will offer his oblation for all his vows and for all his freewill offerings, which they will offer to the Lord for a burnt offering, you shall offer at your own will a male without blemish of the beef cattle, of the sheep, or of the goats. Verse 20. But whatsoever has a blemish, that shall you not offer, for it shall not be acceptable to you or for you. A burnt offering that was a free will offering was voluntary. But once a person decided to do it, they didn't have to do it. But once they decided to do it, their gift was to be one of quality. And if we're going to volunteer to do something for God, we need to give an all-out effort. And the priests needed to make sure that all the offerings were without blemish. 21. And whosoever offers a sacrifice of peace offerings to the Lord to accomplish his vow or a free will offering in beef cattle or sheep, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein, blind or broken or maimed or having a running sore or scurvy or scabbed. You shall not offer these to the Lord, nor make an offering by fire of them upon the altar of the Lord, either a bullock or a lamb that has, and I have to turn my page, anything superfluous anything deformed or lacking in his parts that you may offer for a free will offering but for a vow it shall not be accepted you shall not offer to the lord that which is bruised or crushed or broken or cut neither shall you make any offering thereof in your land neither from a stranger's hand shall you offer the bread of your god of any of these because their corruption is in them, and blemishes be in them. They shall not be accepted for you. 
Verse 28, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, When a bullock or a sheep or a goat is brought forth, then it shall be seven days under the dam, under the mother. And from the eighth day and thereafter, it shall be accepted for an offering made by fire to the Lord. And whether it be a cow or a ewe, you shall not kill it and her young both in one day. So, bruises, cuts, broken bones, deformities, they all constituted a blemish and would make an animal unfit for an offering to God. And the reason why is because these offerings are pictures of Christ, who was perfect in every way. And I'm not talking about physically necessary. I'm talking about morally, spiritually. And just as God gave us his son, who was dear to him, so the people were to give an animal that meant something to them. They couldn't simply get rid of something that was defected. Say, well, you know, I think I'm going to give it to God. Not worth anything anyway. I don't, you know, I'm going to take it to the junkyard anyway. I might as well give it to God. That's, that's not what God wanted. That was unacceptable. 29. And when you will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord, offer it at your own will. On the same day it shall be eaten up. You shall leave none of it until the morrow. I am the Lord. Therefore shall you keep my commandments and do them. I am the Lord. Neither shall you profane my holy name, but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel. I am the Lord which hallow you that brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. God saved Israel from Egypt. Not because they were worthy, but because of his grace, his mercy. And he didn't rescue them in order to force them to do good deeds. He rescued them so that in appreciation they would serve him out of love. And in the process, God's name would be hallowed. It'd be exalted among the heathen. Behold, these people who love their God and serve him out of love. See? And it's the same principle that applies to Christians today. Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid us, paid for our sins. He saved us out of hell. He's done all the work on the cross. His suffering and his death paid for our sins. Made atonement for all the things that we've done wrong. It's all Jesus. 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 He deserves all the praise, all the glory, all the credit. The only thing that's left for us to do is love him. And to serve him out of appreciation. 